Yeah, so um, my name is Bobby, and as you just heard, um, I'm here with Emery. Uh, we're from the Systems Technology and Engineering Department at ByteDance. Uh, we are Linux kernel engineers here, and uh, we're just here to present VSOC from convenience to performance word I.O. communication. Um, the agenda is going to be first just giving some background on VSOC usage features. Um, just looking at like who's using it and why you might want to use it. Use it. Um, the the thesis of our talk hopefully will transform that a little bit, um, and, and we'll talk. You'll kind of see what we what I mean by that. Um, and we'll kind of talk about the protocol, how it works, um, and then look at uh, the performance characteristics of VSOC's design, and then look at recent work that we've done on VSOC, which is really like heavily slanted towards um, uh, finding a more performant uh, socket-based uh, protocol, um, and then looking to uh, future future potential work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, uh, VSOC is another socket type. Uh, marked by the AFV SOC socket family. Um, it's a, a, a way to describe it as a zero configuration communication interface between virtual machines and the host. Um, the, what makes it zero configuration compared to other socket types like AF INA is that uh, VSOC doesn't require that you set up an IP network. You don't have to uh, set up um, like an Ethernet device in your guest and and, 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 and do the setup required for uh, to get uh, IP networking from your the guest to your host. Uh, you, you simply just start up a socket and you have communication between your guest and host. So uh, that's that zero configuration piece. Uh, the, the addressing scheme for a VSOC uses context IDs. Um, these CIDs are kind of uniquely allocated uh, to guests uh, from the host. So each guest will have its own CID and hosts and hypervisors have a, a well-known uh, CID. Uh, ports are used as usual. Uh, for Linux um, and specifically Vert.io, uh, VSOC is found in the Vert.io specification, of course. Um, there's also Hyper-V and VMware um, implementations. These are not um, like cross compatible. They're uh, very different implementations, but they they do share uh, the top uh, socket layer, uh, and they they differ at the at the lower layer, lower level known as the the transport layer. Um, so as you can see here, and this is kind of like a typical uh, kind of architectural layout of of, of a system using VSOC. You have your guest. Inside the guest, you have an app that uh, uses the socket interface to talk to Vert.io VSOC, which then across the guest and host boundary um, using Vert queues, uh, as is done in Vert.io, communicates, uh, sends packets to VO's VSOC, and those get forwarded to the host application. And the traffic goes in the reverse uh, order of that flow as well, if sending from a host app to, to the guest. Um, so for use cases, um, the, the people who really like to use VSOC um, are typically implementing some kind of agent that runs inside the guest. Excuse me. So QMU guest agent uh, supports VSOC. Uh, QMU guest agent is used for uh, suspend and backup uh, uh, capabilities. Um, Kata agent supports uh, VSOC. Kata agent is um, an agent that runs inside uh, Kata guests and uh, starts up containers and um, communicates back with the Kata runtime. Um, it's, it's used for managing and supervise, supervising containers inside the guest. Um, and the reason it's kind of popular for this use case over, for example, TCP IP is because uh, adding a NIC is 
pretty intrusive if you just want a simple simple uh, communication interface. Um, additionally, as mentioned before, TCP and IP requires changes um, and maintenance to both host and guest network configuration. Um, so if you have a service that uh, depends on this communication protocol um, and it, it's possible to have maybe an, an administrator that maybe isn't aware of your service and might configure your network in a way that ends up breaking it. Um, so there's um, a, a little bit of an unreliability in TCP IP given the, 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 the maintenance needs of, of maintaining that, that connection. Um, it's also preferred over serial, which is also a way that or a supported um, communication protocol for, for some of these agents. Um, but serial doesn't support the socket API. Um, multiple senders and receivers often require like an additional proxy service so that uh, packets or messages can get multiplexed to um, the, the different receivers. Um, additionally, the serial link limits read write access to a single process at a time. So it doesn't scale very well. Um, and it, you kind of have to write your own protocol to get uh, some protocol level features like message boundaries if you're trying to uh, implement something like datagrams or um, um, uh, get some reliability guarantees. Uh, the VSOC protocol itself is, is, is pretty uh, straightforward. Um, you'll find that VSOC is very simple uh, because it's a point to point protocol. Um, there's a lot of like simplified measures that can be done. Um, so just to look at the, the protocol uh, real quickly, um, connections are established using a two-way handshake. So the client, in this case, hoping to establish a connection, sends a request packet and the server just responds with a response packet saying, hey, I'm happy to, to establish a connection. Um, and that's the two-way handshake. After, after that point, data transmission can start, and either end can can begin sending uh, packets. These are uh, marked RW packets, or, or that, that's the packet type. Um, and then the received data is then obviously forwarded to to the application uh, by the destination socket. Uh, once that that data gets Passed to the application socket, the destination socket sends control flow information back to the source. And this is the credit update mechanism. Uh, we mentioned that here because uh, we'll talk about it because it's a kind of a key part of where datagrams uh, differ from, from streams. Uh, so connection termination is also a, a, a two-way two -way process. Um, the disconnecting side sends a shutdown packet, and it's acknowledged with a reset packet. So a very, very, very simple protocol. Um, so for streams or connectable type sockets, uh, control flow is managed via credit allocation. Um, so all, pa all packet headers contain these two fields, forward count and buff alloc. Um, that enable endpoints to inform each other of how much data has already been forwarded to the application and how much total received buffer has been allocated. And this allows sources to calculate how much free buffer the other endpoint has. Um, I put the, the equation from the spec here, but it, it basically just allows the sender to say, okay, um, I, I, I can see that the receiver has uh, 100 bytes left and I only want to send five, so I can feel free to send my, my, my five bytes. Um, so senders always know how much more data a receiver can handle. Um, implicit, up, implicit updates uh, happen when sending these RW payloads because this information, again, is packed into the uh, headers. And updates can also happen explicitly via credit request and credit update messages. 
um, in Linux Word IO vSock. Uh, these credit updates are volunteered after uh, the destination socket uh, sends them upwards to, to the user application. So every time your application call, calls receive or read, um, the, the socket layer underneath it will then send uh, credit updates to the, uh, to the other end to say, hey, we've just released this amount of buffer. Um, you can you can send more. Uh, so now looking at the kind of performance uh, aspects of of how VSOC is set up, uh, and and I want to note that like originally VSOC is is really optimized for convenient usage by applications and. Uh, design simplicity, um, as well as um, um, those original use cases that we talked about. So the zero configuration piece it, it being the, the primary attraction to VSOC historically. Um, so it wasn't originally designed with performance um, as the primary goal. Um, so uh, at, the, at the lowest level of VSOC, at the, at the device level, uh, there is a single avert queue. Um, uh, unlike Vert.io.net, which supports multi-queues in, in VSOC, there is a, a single avert queue. Uh, uh, all uh, transmission uh, has to go through a work queue sender. So there is inevitably a work queue wake-up latency that's always incurred. Um, this is kind of amortized by bashing uh, so if you have a really busy socket, um, it might uh, not matter as much for throughput, but that latency is definitely present and uh, needs to be accounted for. Um, this is different than, for example, uh, the IP-based protocols where uh, the socket layer, given a um, a uh, given a, an appropriate queue disk and buffer state, a send message call can propagate all the way down to uh, the, the device layer. In this case, the socket layer will propagate down uh, to a work queue, a wake up call, and then there will be some scheduling, la scheduling latency there um, unconditionally. So there's some possible room there for um, improvement in terms of the both the the vert queue the single vert queue and, and, and work queue um, a, a latency um, but there are some implementation details about vsoc that are very helpful for performance um, one of them is, is batching this is also done over there on it's not um, a unique to vsoc but um, you know, packets are, um, are, are are sent as groups so they're in queue to the vert queue as groups so it minimizes um, the amount of uh, context switching between the guest and the host um, and there's no need for much of the networking stack um, routing filters etc uh, this ultimately saves on cycles because these features are not needed or, or they're not supported depending on uh, your use case, if you need those things, you need them. Um, but for a lot of VSOC use cases, they might not be needed. Um, so you get to save um, cycles by uh, not executing like that code. Um, so currently, VSOC's not really often used for performance sensitive workloads. Uh, but the point of this talk is that we're, we're starting to see potential uh, for this use case, and that's the impetus for uh, for the work that that we've been doing. So, uh, some of that work involves uh, implementing uh, datagram support for Vertio vSOC. Um, if vSOC were to become a replacement for TCP IP for uh, for very performance-sensitive workloads that just need to go across the host and guest boundary. It needs to support 
um, or I, I should say IP-based protocols or the, the AFI net family. If it is to be a true replacement, it needs to support um, all of the socket types. So stream, stack packet, and uh, datagram. Uh, so this, this work has been uh, to support, uh, to implement datagram support. Uh, it's not upstream yet. Uh, proof, proof of concept patches are on the mailing list, uh, as well as uh, a first uh, revision for Verdeo spec changes. Um, I should note that datagrams are already supported by uh, VMware, just uh, not by Verdeo. Um, datagrams for Verdeo VSOC currently are, are the same as, as any other datagram-based protocol. They're connectionless, unreliable, packets may be dropped. Um, different than the connectable um, uh, socket types, uh, they don't use credits um, just because there's no destination socket to necessarily allocate credits to a sender because there's no connection. Uh, and destination and source socket lifetimes can be out of sync. So uh, the accounting uh, uh, calc formula doesn't uh, add up if you have, uh, for example, a destination socket that comes up and down, then the, the, the counts get out of sync. Um, currently, what's under, uh, what was mostly under review uh, in, in the specification was uh, congestion control. So that's currently be, being developed and, um, and, and will be included in the next, in the, in the next revision. Uh, we've gotten really, really, um, I would say promising results from the data grant implementation compared to UDP. Um, these numbers come from a test setup in which we use Vert.io net over vhost um, with configured for a multi-queue, so one RX and one TXQ per CPU. Uh, we're using eight virtual CPUs and one sending thread per virtual CPU. Um, just this one VM running on, on one host, um, not nested, uh, bare metal host. Um, tried to equate the buffer space allocated to both uh, socket types. Um, and for all of these different payload sizes from 64, 512, 1K up to 4K, uh, we're getting almost double throughput on, on, on all of them. And uh, the test is just, um, just sending as many uh, of these payloads as possible. Um, in a loop, so uh, very promising numbers. Um, and we're, we're investigating you know, why, like why this performance improvement. Um, and this is the, the working theory right now. Um, in UDP, IP, Vert.io, you, you, you just have all of these additional components. You have t the traffic control subsystem that is there to configure um, uh, the, the queuing discipline and, and um, flow shaping or traffic shaping, uh, IP tables, net filter. Um, uh, uh, calling into these subsystems are fast. They, they are very fast, uh, but they, take, they still take time. Um, and so when we take away these components, we're just left with what is almost essentially allocating a packet and then queuing it onto the vert queue. And that's really what we're hoping for. That, that, that in theory, is the fastest case for uh, socket-based communication across the VM and host boundary is the socket message is almost copied directly into a vert queue buffer and vsoc gets really close to that so uh, so that's the working theory and, and the numbers to support that uh come from just the the call latencies themselves um so if we look at the uh the send message latencies uh vsoc's uh, datagram send message latency is just really tiny compared to uh, the the latency incurred by UDP send message, 
it's worth noting, and that's one of the reasons that this number is here, is that, again, sometimes UDP send message calls down into uh, the driver layer. So that's this the latency from start transmit. But even if we take out the latency of start transmit, we're still, uh, there's still a, a big gap between the two. So um, getting packets in queued for the device on VSOC are just really, really fast at, at this time. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, uh, an important number is missing here, and that's the mm -hmm. work queue delay. And when I ran these tests, I was seeing upwards of a 300 microsecond average on, on the work queue delay, um, which is significant. So um, that will very likely tie into uh, the, the the future work if we keep on going down this path of optimizing VSOC. But um, yeah, that's the that's the, the current hypothesis on on where the the throughput improvements are coming from for VSOC datagram versus UDP. Um, so just to compare uh, all of the different INET and VSOC family socket types, um, we did this test, which is uh, single threaded uh, throughput. Um, and TCP, it's a little bit hard to see on the smaller, uh, on the smaller payload sizes here, but TCP is more performant um, by a decent margin, uh, pretty much all the way up until uh, 64. There, there's a dip here on, on 4K, and I'm not sure what happened there. That might just be like statistical noise, uh, but TCP seemed to seems to be pretty reliably better than the alternatives for just single threaded uh, throughput. Um, in this test, um, VSOC was giving it a run for its money, um, but uh, the datagram and, and um, in a couple of these instances, um, U UDP is kind of falling behind there as well. Uh, the 64 K payload size, I think, is probably because of um, MTU limitations. Um, but I I'll, I'll leave that um, like guess for, for, for future investigation. Um, for um, the multi-threaded case, um, kind of looking at how these sockets scale, um, we see actually really good scaling from VSOC. So um, this is uh, similar, uh, a similar setup as before, BirdIO.net over vhost. Um, and we, we see UDP keeps up with VSOC as the payload size increases. Um, it falls off at 4K. I, I, I'll leave a note here that UDP, we we're seeing like excessive out of buffer errors uh, once we got to the 4K size. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what was going on there, so I, I, I left that that data out because it seemed to be um, corrupting the result. But um, uh, in any case, for the for the, the throughput numbers on on the multi threaded case, so the sc the scalability of ESOC actually seems to be pretty good, um, which I found to be surprising given um, the the, the, really the single vert cube limitation of it, I, I was expecting there to be um, a, a, a greater a bottleneck on that queue, but um, it, it does scale pretty good. Um, so, so yeah, now I'm going to hand it, hand it off to uh, Emery um, to, to talk about the work on, on SockMap. All right, so the next um, recent enhancement for VSOC is the support for SUCMAP. So SUCMAP is a type of eBPF map that allows you to do programmable um, SK buff redirection using eBPF programs. So the way it works is that you just store um, references to sockets into um, SUCMAP, and then you, you attach a, type, a special type of uh, eBPF programs to this map. And then you can use the helper function to do um, packet redirection in the, in the kernel space. 
So it's used for, for our use case. So um, we have the use case that we have multiple um, apps in the guest space, and then we have to um, aggregate the traffic and then send that to a final destination. So we'll have, we need a um, proxy app in the user space to kind of um, aggregate the data. And by using SockMap, we can actually um, reduce the number of data copying be uh, between user space and kernel space. And here we do some uh, performance evaluation using a simple setup that's uh, in the guest, we have one single thread client sending UDP traffic through a uh, Unix domain socket. And then on the host side, we have one single thread server receiving the data uh, from VSOC. So between those, we use two different mechanisms to redirect the packets. So one is doing it um, solely in the user space uh, using uh, socket. And another one is using SockMap. So the data um, I'm showing here actually show, uh, it's, it looks weird because you can see as we uh, increase the payload size from, um, from um, six, uh, 64 bytes to 64 kilobytes, you cannot see that the throughput will be capped at uh, 100 meg megabytes. And that's because the um, client here we're using is uh, actually very aggressive. It just keeps sending data so there is no, um, so it's, um, so there's uh, the buffer, the same buffer is full and then it will be throttled. So uh, actually we did another test, but we didn't include in this slice. So we tried to add a delay between the, uh, so in the, in the client, we just add a delay between the send data loop. And then we see actually after four, four kilobytes, we're still seeing around like three times the throughput. And then, and then we showed that uh, by using SockMap, we're actually also able to reduce the uh, uh, CPU usage. And the data here is also using that um, aggressive client. So like after, after four kilobytes, it's been like throttled. So we don't see like any uh, CPU usage here. So in the future, we're um, wrapping up the implementation for Datagram. Uh, basically, we're adding a congestion control using uh, start stop signals, and we're uh, sending the patch set. Um, and um, in the future, we'll also like to look into um, the support for multiple uh, vert queue. That's because um, um, if we can use multiple, right now we just have one uh, vert queue for arcs and one vert queue for TX. And if there are multiple apps using VSOC, then um, we think with multiple uh, vert queue, we'll have better um, cache locality. So that means maybe more performance. However, um, current protocol doesn't does not support this. That means we might, uh, because when we're sending the data, um, the K worker might be um, interrupt to and then schedule to another CPU. So we need to have a way to aggregate the data again, and maybe we can add a sequence ID to support this. And also we would like to um, maybe look into the work queue re uh, related delay, because right now when we are sending uh, data, it's being dispatched into another um, K worker to send to batch the data and send the data. And there's a delay here, there, and we want to see if we are able to optimize that. And finally, uh, when we are looking at the uh, internal uh, locks, that's the RX lock, TX locks, we think there might be some rooms for um, improvement. Uh, basically, we want to reduce the scope of those locks to uh, further improve the performance. So to summarize, um, VSOC is a um, easy to use communi communication channel between host and guest. And we have two recent uh, improvements, namely the datagram and also the um, stock maps makes it uh, even more performant. And we're looking into um, optimize it to make it um, to be more performant. And with that, uh, we would like to uh, take questions. 
Thanks. Uh, two things. So first, regarding the performance optimizations for higher throughput and lower latency, what is the main application for this, that, um, that you really want low latency, high put uh, communication between your VM and your guest? Because from your first slides about typical applications, they look more like some demon running in the guest and some like casual chatter between them or something. It didn't look like they need this high throughput, low latency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're actually interested. In, yeah, I can take that one. Um, we're interested in using it for sending metric data from our VMs to our host. Um, it's a, a reasonable use case because that data doesn't need to be sent to other VMs. Um, we have a, a daemon in the host for aggregating that data. Um, and we're sending a lot of it. And our users are sending a lot of it. So. Um, we're looking to sort of relieve a um, the, the overhead uh, currently seen on, on that setup. Okay, yeah, I'd be interested to know what the actual overhead is, right? Um, because you're surely not doing like 100 megabits per second metric throughput, you know? Um, like how much CPU time are you actually wasting on overhead at the moment and how much could you save? Anyway, uh, maybe I should ask yeah, my other question. Yeah. Off the top Which of my head, is, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, regarding the SOC map stuff, um, there was a talk this morning about doing zero copy networking. If I understand correctly, the main motivation for SOC map is to avoid the overhead of the of the copy, the mem copy. Could you do something like doing zero copy into user space supplied buffers and do IOU ring um, and uh, yeah, get your performance benefits that way? I think I can take take this one. So um, we're we're actually also looking at that data copying right now. So right now there is a um, data copying in the kernel space between the sender and the receiver, and maybe we can somehow um, like reuse the SK buff, and then we don't need to actually allocate one more SK buff again. So that will reduce one data copy, but for is that zero copy that I'm not sure. Yeah, it might be good to collaborate with the other authors working on network zero copy. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, first a bit of background and then a user space interface question. Uh, the bit of background, so there's a, another similar interface. There's the Zen VChan thing, which came from Cubes OS a couple years before VSOC was created, um, The uh, which is an analogous concept. Um, the user space interface for that has uh, two things that you can do. Uh, it has a data ready, which allows you to get the number of bytes that can be read from, uh, that have been received by the kernel, but, uh, or, well, it, that's not exactly how it works in Zen, but in this, in this, in VSOC would be, have been, uh, have been received by the kernel and can be read into user space without blocking. And then there's also a buffer space um, that uh, returns to user space the amount of bytes that can be written into the other side without blocking. And this is used by consumers of this interface. In VSOC, we have, uh, this is actually, it's just your presentation that made me realize that, oh, we are actually propagating that information across about the um, amount of space available on the, on the other side. And certainly we would also have that on the receive side because it's in some buffer somewhere and we can count that. Uh, what is the, the people's thoughts on adding a mechanism to expose that to user space, maybe in uh, a similar vein of like how with pipes we have an ioctal for FIO and read. Um, that would allow VSOC to match the Zen semantics and, be, and allow things that are currently depending on that for Zen to be ported over to VSOC. I think that's, that's interesting. Um, I guess it could be done through the the, the VSOC ioctal um, mechanism right now. Uh, perhaps how, how's it? How what, what's the what's the actual access mechanism for Zen VChan on uh, from the application side to get the the, the buffer uh, allocation? Uh, well, there it's you've got uh, this is all done in shared memory, like Zen style front back. Uh, transmit and receive queues, and so you have a head pointer and a tail pointer that you can just like 
see where it is. Um, that's a, that's there's some library that wraps that and provides the semantics that you want. Um, so it's it's a bit different in terms of how it's implemented in the back end, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. No, the, so the IOCTL thing, I think that's on the um, VSOC like device node or something. Uh, maybe like a sock opt might also be another option. I don't know. If, I I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know if people have preferences or thoughts, but um, that would be cool. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting idea. Uh, any other questions? Uh, one on the chat uh, from Marco Pina. I'm currently working on VSOC, VSOC latency optimizations for my master's thesis. Is there any tool you can suggest to perform tests and benchmark latency for VSOC? Yeah, the um, the the test directory for VSOC in the kernel source recently had some perf tools added to it. Um, as far as uh, so, so, so there are, are some uh, uh, throughput numbers there. There might be it might report latency. I I can't remember. Um, so I I would start there. Uh, we've done a lot of writing our own, um, just because porting other tools to to use um, for like I ran into some issues porting, for example, uh, uperf to to vsoc datagram because the um, with packet dropping and the fact that the control socket needs a reliable connection, it, it, it was just a, uh, eventually I want to do that. I just, it, it was more expedient to, to write my own, but um, you might have to do a little bit of writing your own as well. Uh, but the, the perf tools inside the, the test directory are probably a good place to start. Oh, and uh, I'm not sure if it's upstream, but uh, either iperf already, so uperf has uh, vsoc streams upstream, and Stefano uh, has a uperf port for vsoc streams as well that can give you some numbers as well uh, for, the, for the stream uh, numbers. All right. That's on. And that's on. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, any last questions? If not, let's thank the speakers for a great talk. Thank you.